Okay guys, so I want to just continue working through uh, section 5.3, graphing general rational functions with you. I'm going to do example 3b, uh, which is the third case when m is greater than n. In other words, the uh, degree of the numerator of the rational function is greater than the degree of the denominator. So we'll talk about that. I'll review that a little bit with you, and then we'll jump in and do... Example four, which is uh, exclusively a graphical analysis on your calculator, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's do example 3b. And so I'll go right back up here again to the top and look at this little key concept box. So where we left off earlier was basically that we have to follow the three steps that were given, and then I came up with a fourth step uh, together with you. So step one, find the x-intercept. Step two, uh, find the vertical asymptote. Step three, find the horizontal asymptote. And now we're on the third case. So example one and two were case, were these two cases. And now we're on the third case, which is when m is greater than n. Okay, when m is greater than n. And m again is the power uh, on the leading term or the degree of the numerator and n is the degree of the denominator. And so let's uh, go work through the actual example. So example 3b, go all the way down here, example 3b. Uh, let's identify the parts again. Let's identify the parts. So we have uh, p of x here. We have q of x on the bottom, p of x is x squared minus 25, q of x is x minus 4, uh, and then if we're going to identify parts of this, we want to say uh, m is 2, and the power here is 1, so n is 1, and then the leading coefficient is 1, so we're going to call a sub m is 1, and the leading coefficient here on q of x is also 1, so b sub n is 1. So that's basically all the parts we need to identify to be able to graph this rational function. So let's follow the steps that were given to us again in the top. Uh, step 1 is find the x-intercepts. And so if we find the x-intercepts here, that involves taking p of x, uh, which is the denominator, taking p of x and putting that equal to zero and solving it to find the real zeros. So here's uh, p of x, and if we solve this, we get x squared is 25, so x is plus minus 5. So we actually get two x-intercepts now. Uh, so let me graph those, x is plus minus 5, so 5 and 5. So there's 5, and back 5 should be here. Okay, so those are two x-intercepts. We graph them. Uh, so we can move on, and let's do step number 2, which is to find the vertical asymptote. Okay, to find the vertical asymptote, you take q of x and put it equal to 0. So again, for us, q of x is the denominator of the rational function. And this is x minus 4 equals 0, so x is 4. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. So x equals 4, go ahead and graph that uh, vertical asymptote. There it is. Okay, and then uh, our step number 3 is to graph the horizontal asymptote. So now we have the third case, and this case is uh, when m, in this case, which is 2, is greater than n, which is 1. So I'm going to go up and show you what the key concept definition box says about this case, Okay, just so that you see it. So this says when m is greater than n, it's our case, 
there is no horizontal asymptote, but the graph's end behavior is the same as the graph of this line. Well, in our case, it'll be a line. Most of our examples will be a line. Uh, theoretically, it could be uh, something different. And so, and so, um, if you look at this, let's go back to our function down here, and let's graph the horizontal asymptote. So, the the there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, that's the first piece of information we learned. Okay. But the end behavior follows or is the same as this line. Y equals A sub M over B sub N times X to the M minus N. And if we plug that in, you get Y equals, so again, we're going back here. Let's find stuff. Uh, a sub m, we said earlier, is 1. So I've got 1 over b sub n, we said earlier, is 1. Okay, so far so good. Times x to the m minus n. So we just said here m is 2 minus n is 1. Okay. And so now I have this line, y equals x. And so we can graph that. Again, this is not an asymptote. This is a bit strange. So I'm just going to graph it as a solid line, it's not an asymptote, uh, even though it's not actually a line on the graph either. Okay, so I'm still going to use a highlighter, um, but it's where the graph's ends go towards, so the end behavior of the graph. Okay, so that's about all we can do here um, without actually inspecting the shape by graphing on our calculator. So. Again, I'll go back up here and just re-emphasize. Uh, we said our fourth step is when you've done all the first three steps, when you've done this, this, and this, then our fourth step was graph the function on your calculator to see the shape. All right? So let me zoom back over here, uh, and we'll go and compare the shape of the function uh, on the calculator. All right? So... Let's graph this. This is x squared minus 25, oh, not 255, and divide by x minus 4. All right. Then when you do this, and let's do a zoom standard, see what happens. It's okay. I feel like I want to see a little bit more of this. Um, if you look at our graph, our grid here, x intercepts at 5 and 5, 5 and 5. I guess I can see what's happening, but I'm going to zoom out just to see a little bit more of what the graph is all about. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So that gives me a little bit of an idea what the end behavior is talking about. Uh, so the line y equals x, the graph, this branch and this branch right here, is approaching that line y equals x. So let's see what happens if we graph the line y equals x uh, to talk about the end behavior, see what happens. So you can see this end is definitely slowly approaching this and this end, and uh, maybe it looks like it's slightly going away from it, but it's kind of similar, almost parallel at some point to uh, the line y equals x. So I think this gives us enough information to actually draw our graph. Now, our graph is not going to be to scale because we're not going to plot uh, a whole bunch of points. So we can just approximate the shape from here on our graph. Um, and so if we do that, you're going to get something like function going close to the line, crossing the x-axis here, and then avoiding the vertical asymptote. So uh, something like this, going through the x-axis and then going up towards the vertical asymptote. Um, something like that. And then also the function here on the other side, if we inspect the other side, this side, 
It's coming up from the vertical asymptote, crossing the x-axis at 5, and then kind of bending towards that uh, line y equals x. So doing something like this, crossing, and then bending towards this line y equals x. So if you look at that, it looks quite a bit like when we had this on Zoom Standard. Okay, If you look at our graph, quite a bit like Zoom Standard there. All right, so that's kind of what uh, we were hoping that you would get out of uh, graphing rational functions in this section. And then uh, we'll go back to our calculator, but now we have uh, an example four, which is a word problem that uh, gives you a bit of a more complicated question. And uh, I think I have some directions for this to help you out, but uh, we'll read the word problem together and then we'll graph it and analyze it on our calculator. Okay, so this is not really much of a problem to do by hand, more of a calculator problem. So it says uh, the mean temperature T in degrees Celsius of the Atlantic Ocean between these latitudes, 40 degrees north or 40 degrees south, can be modeled by this function, where D is the depth in meters. All right. So graph the model using your graphing calculator. So again, T is the mean temperature uh, of the Atlantic Ocean between those two latitudes, where D is the depth. So at this, at depth D, the temperature is T. Okay. So again, just remember on your calculator, uh, T is going to be Y and D is going to be X. Okay. And then we go and graph this and see what we get. Then we'll worry about the second part of the question. I think graphing this might be a bit tricky because the numbers are so big. So let's go here and graph this. I'm going to go, uh, I think I'll just clear out these two. And let me just put it in eight so it's a bit separated from the other functions. So I'll enter this in, use parentheses, of course, 17,800. Uh, D, which is X in our case, plus 20,000, uh, close the parentheses, divide it by open new parentheses, 3d squared, which in our case is x squared, plus 740d, plus 1,000. Okay, and then graph this. So. I'm going to do zoom standard, and I'm pretty sure this is going to fail badly. All right, so that's all you see when you do zoom standard. <laughs> now, we can try some things. Let's try zoom fit. In cases like these, you can try zoom fit to see if that will fit the graph properly in a window for you on your calculator. Uh, and that's not really helping necessarily too much either. So we have to play with the window a little bit. So I've already done some experimentation here. Um, you can analyze this again, uh, you know, using the same techniques we did for vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, all those kind of things. Uh, but I think if you use these window settings, so if you use 1500 for X, just go out for X quite a bit. Uh, and then just leave your y min negative 10 and your y max 10. Let's try this for now and see what happens. Okay. Oof, that looks good. If you graph this, you see something happening here in what we call the first quadrant. Um, and the question that they're asking us then, let's, let's just leave it at this. I'm not sure if that graph is good enough, but let's leave it at this. Uh, we at least see some of the uh, graph there. We can always increase the uh, Y max. Let let's do that a little bit. Let's increase the Y max and see if we see anything more interesting. Okay. Oh, that's certainly more interesting. So we are talking about um, temperature. Okay. So Y is temperature and depth is... Uh, D is depth, so X here is depth. So uh, as you go deeper into the ocean, the temperature gets 
decreases, okay, it gets lowered. So that's fine. So this seems to make sense. So let's go back and answer the question they're asking us now. So now it says use your graph to estimate the depth at which the mean temperature is 4. Okay, so, so what they're doing here is estimate the depth. They're saying give me an x value for this y value, okay? y value which is 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, now in terms of our question this is a t value in terms of our question here uh, this is actually a depth. But those correspond on your calculator. So on your calculator all you can do to do this if they give you a y value you always to find the, in, to find the, the corresponding x value for, for a y value just go here and uh, graph that y value, just graph y equals 4, whatever they gave you, y equals 4, okay? And if you graph that, you'll see, oh, there they go, and we see an intersection here. So this will tell us when y is 4, at this point where they intersect, what is x? So if you do second calc, and you find the intersection, then uh, you will have your answer. So you can move a little bit closer to the intersection if you want. It's not really that important, but you can move a bit closer to the intersection. Here's the intersection. And then it says first curve. We can let the blue curve, the uh, rational function, be our first curve. Second curve can be the line, okay, the fixed depth of four, f uh, uh, what is it, f uh, sorry, f the temperature of four degrees Celsius. Hit enter. I don't really want to guess. I want the calculator to figure this out. And so when the temperature is 4 degrees, the depth will be about 1,237.74 meters, if you round to the uh, thousandth. Okay, so we can just round this up to the nearest meter. Uh, so let's do this. So we can say from our calculator we found that what's going to happen is x or d... Uh, the depth will be approximately 1,238 meters, right? So this is a typical uh, graphical analysis question on your calculator. I hope this helped you figure out how to do that. All right, guys, thank you.